Dear friends, today we have a special episode of Super Tony's Adventures. Enjoy! Friends, it's happening! We're back in our beloved Trevor Henderson universe. Today, we will meet a formidable and mysterious giant known as Day 17. As I said, this is one of the giants in the Trevor Henderson universe. It moves on four legs and has a huge, long neck, which is usually hidden in the clouds along with its head. Tentacles hang from it right down to the ground. With them, Day 17 can take people straight to the sky. No one knows what happens to the giant's victims there. After analyzing this picture of the monster, we can conclude that it is about 11 kilometers high. In addition, it is known that Day 17 is a storm creature. Because its appearance is always followed by storms, hurricanes, strong winds, rain, and lightning. Generally speaking, this gigantic creature is capable of causing enormous damage or even destroying an entire world. It is the ability to manipulate reality and people's faith, and the laws of physics simply don't affect it. The monster's skin is incredibly thick and strong, so no weapon in existence is capable of harming it. They say that only a doomsday device can destroy this giant. It is a hypothetical device capable of destroying all life on Earth or even Earth itself at once. Therefore, because of its abilities, Day 17 is considered one of Trevor Henderson's most powerful giants. But is it as dangerous as it looks? Did you know, for example, that the creature's real name is the Wandering Faith? And there is an explanation for that. There is a theory that with its tentacles, the giant takes people of faith to heaven and gives them eternal life in paradise in gratitude for their faith in God. So, according to this theory, Day 17 is a harmless creature of divine origin. However, another version claims that the monster, on the contrary, takes lost souls, after which eternal torment awaits them. A third theory denies any divine origin and states that Day 17 doesn't take people to heaven with its tentacles, but simply eats them. We don't know the truth because no one has yet returned from above. Even Trevor himself said that the goals of all his giants remain beyond our understanding. And also, he mentioned that there is a separate universe in which all the giants live. It is in another dimension. So, their appearance in our world is the consequence of some anomaly and the intersection of different dimensions. But to get at least some sense of the truth and to understand what exactly Day 17 does, I will tell you an ancient legend. Hear it and you can then decide for yourselves what to believe. One day, an unusual storm raged over a small town, and soon afterwards, the inhabitants saw a giant creature standing near their town, its head hidden behind thunderclouds. The authorities decided to urgently evacuate the city, and soon there was no one left. Only one person remained. It was a mad priest who roamed the deserted streets shouting that God himself had chosen them to ascend to heaven, and that the giant was not a monster, but God's assistant, who would grant all believers unprecedented blessings. Of course, there was no one left to listen to the ravings of the lunatic. Several months passed, and the monster remained motionless near the town. Then it was decided that it was harmless, and all the residents returned to their homes. As the months passed, the town continued with its life as before. People got used to the constant presence of the motionless monster and didn't even notice it. But one day, the weather turned bad again and a hurricane came. The creature moved and lowered its giant tentacles to the ground. The first person it grabbed was the mad priest. The monster caught the priest with its tentacles and raised him up to the sky while he laughed and shouted that he had been chosen by God himself. That was the last time anyone saw him. Now friends, decide for yourselves what to believe. Was the priest eaten or did he find eternal peace in heaven? One day, the residents of a small town noticed an unusual and creepy neighbor. A giant monster with four bony legs appeared near their town. It was so huge that its body towered above the clouds and could be seen from absolutely anywhere in the town. The strange thing was that the inhabitants were not frightened, nor did they flee from the city. It seemed to everyone that it was an absolutely normal phenomenon and nothing unusual was going on. Days and weeks went by and the monster stood still, but one day, in the middle of the night, 
there was a very creepy rumbling and grinding sound that lasted for several hours. In the morning, the townspeople found that the monster was gone, but before it left, it destroyed several houses that belonged to bad people known throughout the town for their sins. After this incident, the monster was nicknamed the Wandering Doom. The first image of the giant we saw was this. Isn't that creepy? Well, we know from verified sources that the monster is about 12 and a half kilometers tall, which is nearly eight miles. That means it's bigger than its closest relative, Day 17. We can see that the monster has a very bony body. It has protruding pelvic bones, ribs, and has some sharp spurs on its front legs. But because most of its body is in the shadows, it is not clear if it has skin or if it is a giant four-legged living skeleton. However, you can clearly see gaps between the bones on its hind legs, which means that the monster most likely has no skin, otherwise it would be covering them. It is also unclear what its head looks like. We can only see a small thickening at the end of the neck. It is possible that this is where its eyes, mouth, nose, and face are located. However, there is a theory that these two appendages are some kind of tusks at the sides of the mouth of the creature. And the neck is not a neck at all, but rather something like a proboscis, and the nose is at the end of it. In other words, Day 18 looks like a giant, gaunt, elephant-like skeleton. Well, this is only a fan theory, but the fact is that the Wandering Doom has no special weapons, like tentacles to lift the faithful to heaven. Consequently, this monster is 100% a destroyer, and its incredible size is enough for it to demolish an entire city and destroy thousands of people in just a few seconds. Another proof of this is the fact that Day 18 was published by Trevor at the same time as such giants of destruction as Behemoth and Overlooker. Although, the latter may not be a destroyer, but the author's caption under that post said that they destroyed everything. And I wouldn't argue with Trevor Henderson himself. He probably knows better than the rest of us about the universe he created. But don't panic too much about the destructive power of Day 18. It is known to spare the good and the godly, bringing down its power only on sinners. Thus, Day 18 and Day 17 work together. One punishes the sinners, the other grants ascension to the faithful. Naturally, like Trevor's other giants, this one has a super strong body, which no modern weapon can damage. And what is there to damage if, as we have already found out, it is a walking giant living skeleton? There is also the erroneous belief that Day 18 is capable of walking on water. This, by the way, is not only impossible, but easily disproved by the original image. Take a closer look at it. You can see that the giant is not walking on water, but on land, on the other side of what looks like a huge sea or ocean. In general, there appears to be very little information about the Wandering Doom online. Trevor himself never gave any details about the giant, and most known facts have been found by numerous fans. And we have told you about this monster based on our own observations and inferences. So, if you disagree with us about something, tell us in the comments below. Tony and I will be happy to discuss your interesting theories as well. Take a look at the original drawing made by Trevor Henderson himself. Only the creature's head is visible here, although we can clearly see that it is as tall as the whole mountain from which it is bursting out. As you see, the monster looks like some sort of reptile. By the way, it was Trevor's fans who named the giant. Perhaps by analogy with the mythological behemoth from the Bible, which is the demon of gluttony. The creator himself did not name his creation, because Behemoth first appeared along with images of other giants about two years ago. Trevor's picture doesn't show what the monster's body looks like, but based on the fact that its head looks like an iguana's head, its body is most likely similar. This is confirmed by the spikes along its spine, which most likely extend all the way to its tail. By the way, for some reason, everyone is sure that Behemoth has long limbs, and that's exactly how its image has spread all over the internet. However, Tony and I believe that it spends most of its time underground, as the image shows chunks of Earth bursting out along with the giant itself when it broke through the Earth's crust from below. Plus, we can see its deep black eyes with no visible retina, 
which means it most likely sees almost nothing, like moles, which is another confirmation of this theory. But if it looked like that, Behemoth would not be able to move nimbly under the ground, so it is more likely that it has short legs with sharp claws like lizards and a small tail. Friends, tell us in the comments what you think the body of this giant looks like. We'll like to hear your thoughts. Now let's talk about the dangers this giant can pose. Its enormous size and sharp teeth make it the most dangerous creature Trevor has ever created. Its head alone is larger than the tallest mountain on Earth, and according to some reports, it could be 800 kilometers long. So it could cover the whole of the UK or Italy with its body, but this is just a guess. In fact, Behemoth could be even larger. Even if it is calm, it could destroy an entire metropolis just by walking, causing an earthquake or simply crushing it. On top of that, it has a mighty roar. This giant is able to destroy buildings with it, and a person can not only go deaf, but also receive severe damage to their internal organs. But the main threat are its giant and powerful jaws, which can rip out a huge piece of land, taking thousands of people at a time. Not in vain, Behemoth is one of the destruction giants, because if it wants to, it could even destroy our whole planet. Imagine what will happen if it makes thousands of huge tunnels, releasing magma to the surface and destroying all life on Earth. Not to mention the fact that it could cause powerful earthquakes and giant tsunamis. On top of all this, Behemoth has strong scales like a lizard, and given its size, most conventional weapons won't damage it at all. Perhaps a nuclear warhead would do the trick, but in addition to destroying the giant, it would destroy all life within a radius of about 100 kilometers around. By the way, according to one theory, unlike other giants, Behemoth is able to produce offspring because it is an animal-like monster. Like other reptiles, it lays eggs, only these can be up to 10 kilometers in diameter. By the way, Behemoth is probably a she. Yes, yes, most likely the giant is a female. The thing about lizards is that only males are brightly colored, and since our giant has a rather pale skin, this could mean it's a girl, although this is only a guess. By the way, according to another theory, Behemoth is the ruler of all giants, and judging by its look and its huge and sharp fangs, we can conclude that it is a carnivore. And what could a giant, who is at the very top of the food chain among all Trevor's creatures, feed on? Other giants, of course. For example, its diet definitely includes such titans as Day 17, Day 18, and several others. Well, to be honest, it's not much of a leader if it devours its own underlings. Friends, I'd like to point out that almost everything we've told you about Behemoth is based on rumors and various fan theories. Behemoth is one of the most mysterious giant creatures Trevor has ever created, due to the lack of information about it. The artist himself never revealed any details about it. Perhaps he wanted to stir the imagination of his fans and provoke a lot of different arguments and discussions. I think his plan worked. What do you think of this giant? What interesting theories do you have? Tell us in the comments and the best answers will be featured in our next episode. Well, give us a like and subscribe so you won't miss the new episodes of Super Tony. Bye-bye!